G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I want to take you through every vegetable that we are currently growing in our vegetable garden through our subtropical winter. Now, there's a lot of veggies to get through, so let's get into it. But before we do get into it, I should just explain a few things. Firstly, our temperature range. Our minimum temperature on average at this time of year, and even say the middle of our winter, is probably a better guide, is 10 degrees Celsius. That's on average. And the maximum our days get up to at this time of year is around 22 on average. Now I'll just come around, get a bit closer. Not too close, you can see my wrinkles too much. But it can get a lot colder here through winter. We can even get frosts, it's not common, it's very rare to get a frost, but I know the strawberry farmers around here, they have a sprinkler system usually set up just in case they're expecting frost. And I have seen the temperature gauge down to below zero here, even though technically I don't think by the Bureau of Meteorology we've had a minus degrees Celsius ever in this region since the records began. Don't quote me on that. So that gives you some idea about the temperature range through winter here. Probably similar to a good summer in England. <laughs> hey, I'm not having a go at you. It's beautiful weather over there in summertime. The other thing I wanted to mention was don't pay any attention to the big mess that's behind me and all around this place. I've got a lot of construction going on. We're making a pathway or extending our pathway around the shed, long overdue, and around the back of the tank, our water tank, so that I can make a little bit of a nursery type area instead of having slushy grass and a unusable area really at the back of our shed. I can now store things there, do mock-ups of experiments, of growing plants in containers, which I know a lot of you guys have been asking for, and just in general, a potting up area and a workable area that is on hard standing. So I'm looking forward to having that completed, but it's not at the moment, and it's a big mess. So forgive all the big mess, and I've still got a lot of wood to clean up from our rear deck renovation that was nearly falling down and fair income was absolutely dangerous. We had to ban people from going up the back stairs, but now it's just about finished and I will soon clear out this wood. And the other thing is I am still building more garden beds and I'm gonna be using a lot of that recycled wood like I just did for this one here to build further garden beds as we go when I can get the time to do it. But even though I do want to build more garden beds and have even more space to grow veg, I still have a lot growing on. So let's stop talking about that and let's talk about what veg we are actually growing. Let's start with this bed first. You can see there's a lot of lettuce. None of that was planned at all. All them have come up on their own and I've been harvesting them like crazy to allow space for the onions that we did actually sow in this bed. We've got a bunch of red bulb spring onions in the middle here, although you can hardly see them. Guess who's having salad for dinner tonight? Us, and we're gonna have a ton of salad to eat. You will eat your salad. That's what I'll be saying to the kids. And then on the outsides, we've got this nice elongated red, red bulbed or purple bulbed variety of onion. The onions are going well, they're growing to plan. It's just that they're getting crowded out by these salad crops because salad grows so well at this time of year. Things like mustard here. In fact, I can just tear a bit of that off now. Got so much mustard we just can even waste it and give it to the chickens. Probably pick that up later. No, I probably won't. If I bring you in a little bit closer, you can see I've even got a few tomato seedlings coming up. I don't know if you remember, but I made that video last year about using over a thousand mini tomatoes to make tomato sauce. Well, that tomato plant grew here and obviously with all those mini tomatoes, you're gonna to get some that are gonna fall in and create some small seedlings the next season after which is what's happening. Of course, I'm gonna to have to remove these as well, otherwise I'll just take over this whole garden bed. 
In this next bed along here, you can see these large mustard. They're a Japanese mustard growing. They self-seeded. But again, the main plant that I planted in here are onions. And this is a brown Hunter River variety of onion. One of my favorite because I can grow them from seed and they will mature all the way through winter into spring and then I can harvest them at the end of spring into summer and then leave a few of the plants keep growing which will in turn go to seed so that I can use that seed to grow next season again. So all this seed here and these onions coming up now and growing fairly well, most of the seed has come up, has all been from one plant that has seeded and I've just simply collected that once the plant has died off and re -sowed it. This bed here has a real mixture in it. Some of them are older plants that I just kept in because they were growing so well and I over-seasoned them. And other plants we have planted in and you've seen that in previous videos if you do follow me quite a bit. So we've got a mixture of herbs in here, some parsley. This is a flat leaf parsley, very hardy and has been growing for several years now. We've got some bronzed fennel, which is another beautiful plant. You don't need much of this in cooking to flavor a dish. Really good with potatoes and fish. I've even got a chili here that I salvaged from over in another part of the yard that wasn't growing too well and is now growing okay, but chilies aren't supposed to be growing very well anyway at this time of year because of the cold. But they will overwinter and slow down somewhat, but still produce a little. And I'll give you some good examples later on in the patch of chilies that are still producing, even though they sort of shouldn't be. We've got some kale. You might have remembered me sowing those kale seeds. Look at the plants now. And we've been picking them off and putting them in salads and stir fries constantly using baby kale and just leaving other plants mature so that we can have them at all stages and have kale over a long period. Right in the middle here is Egyptian spinach. Of course it was green, now it's nearly completely dead and the pods are starting to open up. This is exactly what I wanted. And when I did talk about this plant earlier on, it was a big green bushy plant and the worry was, not from me though, but from probably some of you, that this might shade out the, the seedlings of the lettuce and the kale as it's growing and affect the growth of those plants underneath this. I wanted to leave this in here so that it would go to seed and so that it would dry out and so that we could use the seed for next season. Often I'll just take the seed and sprinkle it around and know that it'll come up in summer because this is a really hot loving, heat loving plant and it doesn't grow well at all through winter. But that was the purpose of leaving it in the bed. So now that it has done its job, I'm gonna remove it and I'm just gonna let everything grow well around it. Pull it out like that, put this behind me. It'll just all dry out naturally now and then I'll grab some of those pods, put the seeds in some plastic or paper bags and keep them for next season. Also self-seeding in here is a fairly large tomato plant and I don't want that growing in here. I've got tomatoes which I will show you over the other side here of the veggie garden. It might seem a bit callous but I don't want it in there. I know it's a mini tomato, don't need it, it can go. It was just harboring a little bit of grass too that was growing around the base of the plant there. But what I will leave in here is a coriander that is self-seeded. I've already been picking this and I noticed this earlier on. Coriander will readily self-seed in our garden, but it'll only come up in the winter time here. Doesn't like the heat, contrary to what you might think, being a Mexican uh, Thai type of food. I suppose it does grow in the tropics, but through my experience, it doesn't grow very well through the hotter part of the years. In fact, if you just leave it on its own, it will prefer to only come up when it cools down considerably here in the subtropics. But I love coriander, and we all do. And it won't take up much space here. I will keep cutting it down anyway. This yellow leaf lettuce here, I tell you what, it is prolific. And we have been eating the hell out of it, and it's been excellent. A beautiful tasting lettuce, very mild and crisp. It's almost a bit like an iceberg, but loose leaf lettuce. And you can see how close that I'm growing it together. It's because we're harvesting the leaves one by one. We're not pulling out plants. And that is one of the best ways I reckon to harvest lettuce is 
by just pulling the leaves off. Unless, of course, you're growing a hearting variety and that's different, then you would probably spread them apart or maybe grow them close together and then thin them out as they're getting larger, but thin them out and eat them at the same time. You can see how well the carrots are growing in this bed here. Carrots love this time of year. They will grow all year round in our climate, but the heat does knock them around and they don't grow as well. But this time of year, they just absolutely flourish. This is a small round French variety, thinning them out as we go. In the middle here, is celerac. This will also develop into a bulb vegetable and somehow I left a cabbage in this bed here that's come up on its own. I did throw a heap of mini cabbage seeds in here. If you remember the mouse came along and ate them all down and I had to try to cover them over. Well I removed all those cabbages and I put them in another spot. I potted them up first to stop them from getting gnawed away. Even though I tried covering them, it just wasn't working. I salvaged what I could, potted them up, and then planted them out down the back here. And that worked, but yeah, I left one in the bed there. Didn't see it, and it's grown, and I just couldn't bear to pull it out. In this area here, I've got some purchased plants, like these figs that I'm gonna plant in containers, and also a mixture of plants that I've salvaged from when we dug up these old garden beds that we are now in the process of renovating. Things like this perpetual spinach I found growing in a garden bed over here. And have a look at this bok choy coming up in the bed here. That's just self-seeded. So far, I've still only had the time to do one raised garden bed. This area here, I'm hoping to add several more beds. Just haven't got to it yet, but I'll take you over and show you how well that one bed is going. Speaking about salvaging plants, all this lettuce here has all been salvaged. All these cabbages well, were salvaged from the other bed and are now growing in a sort of circular fashion here. I've got some spinach that I grew from seed that's in the center. Another lettuce here, some mini cauliflowers. These are all mini cabbages by the way. And at the back here, this is that old Aztec corn that just shouldn't be surviving, but it is somehow. I've never grown this before. I, in summer, grew it for the first time, and then I noticed some of the seed coming up after I'd harvest, and I thought this couldn't keep growing into winter, and it has, and it's looking pretty healthy. It's somewhat stunted. It's not growing great. It should be this high by now for the amount of time it's been in there, but it's still fairly healthy, and I'm interested to see how it will go in the middle of our winter and whether it will actually survive. So it's a bit of an experiment that I'm doing. This is an interesting bed because this goes against the charts and I mean grow charts. And it's a good example of why you should use those growing charts online or in books only as a guide because in our area, this is not supposed to be grown through winter at all. It's a big no-no, not gonna grow, no way. Well, as you can see, it is growing. These are zucchinis and squash. The squash aren't doing as good. They're a little pale leaf, but I am growing a squash behind me here in a small container that's actually doing okay. So it might be just a soil thing for these squash, but the zucchini are doing very well when they apparently shouldn't be. So it's always pays to listen to yourself sometimes and do a little bit of experimenting because you never know in your own microclimate, in your own backyard or wherever you're growing, it might be a courtyard even that is a little hotter than the average or a little bit in the right temperature zone at the right time a year but the wrong time of year by the book you still might be able to grow something that you thought you couldn't and unless you give it a go you just won't know i had plenty of spare cabbage so i planted that in a spot where one of the squash died and behind the cabbage there is a elephant garlic that has just come up on its own there you go it must have been left in from the last season's garlic hopefully it'll grow a nice bulb i think the best way to show you this middle bit is just by the shoot and point type thing, me behind the camera. Though a lot of these plants here are saved or salvaged plants as well. This isn't, this is oregano, always dies back through winter and has a bare patch in the middle. Sometimes I try growing things in there, but it's a few weeds and maybe a bok choy that I'm not really looking after. But you can still use this plant. It's just not as flourishing as it usually is coming into spring. But what is flourishing and starting to grow like the clappers is this mint here. Look at it go, it's filling right up. This was all dead. It looked like nothing was in this bed through the end of, end of summer. 
but as I knew you can see it's coming back with a vengeance and plenty of mojitos for that. Got a couple of habanero chilies that I salvaged from out of this bed here when we tore it apart and most of these other plants are salvaged from here as well. Garlic chives, that's a walking onion that was salvaged, yacon and I don't know I'll put them back in once we get these beds done I'll put them back in of course more yacon I'm doing a bit of experiment here with a tomato that's self-seeded a yacon in the middle a standard cabbage another mini cabbage that I just whacked there and some sweet potato that actually come up on its own so I've left it in that pot artichoke most of them grew from seed some of them were pups that had come up from last year's plants and of course some sorrel where well, you just can't kill that stuff it's everywhere eggplant I salvaged that and tomatoes got a little bit of blight on them probably could do with a bit of uh, EK fungicide spray getting some fruit on them now all growing in containers and of course another cabbage and we've got a big Thai basil at the back here in that bed over there I've just got one single tomato it's a Thai tomato a small pink egg and I'm not sure what else I'm going to put around there I was going to plant potatoes in there but I haven't got around to it just yet and in here I've got a tomato experiment going these are all determinate tomato plants all mini tomatoes I actually bought them from the nursery they're a pot prize so they're meant to be a small tomato plant and I'll be conducting an experiment with them in here is the end of the kangkong really is a summer vegetable I will just leave that now over winter Jerusalem artichoke these tubers will be underneath this all the plants have died off now that winter is fully here that's normal there's a little bit of growth left here but the plant is essentially dead this is the jicama and now what I'm waiting for is the plant to develop its pods properly and then I'll harvest the tubers and the pods as well so that I can grow this plant again next season because I'm a big fan of it it's almost well it is easier to grow than potatoes here these dead plants here are all turmeric we've got we're going to have a whole ton of turmeric we'll dig all that up and turn it into turmeric powder give it away as gifts because we'll have so much of it and then replant what we don't use and here we are at the old gourd tunnel completely bare and I like the new look I'm keen to be growing something new in here although I did grow tomatoes last season on this side I'm growing them now on this side here and plenty of other vegetables and last season I did grow beetroot on that side and I'm growing beetroot again on this side here but of course there'll be less shaded out because there's not a whole heap of vines remember I had passion fruits as well growing up this side as well as gourds both sides covering this whole gourd tunnel or I call it a trellis tunnel in these first two little round raised garden beds here I've got these mini tomato plants growing they're a San Marzano again they're a pot type variety a determinate type of tomato up in front here we've got a choco my first choco it's a white variety first one I've ever grown of any type of choco and we'll see how that goes I'm not sure about chocos I don't think this is the right season for them but I'm sure it'll muscle its way through winter and start growing better in spring along here we've got a whole row of daikon radishes and then scattered in here are tomatoes some tomato plants I've grown from seed and or they've self-seeded and I've transplanted here and other tomatoes I've got from the nursery particular varieties that I wanted to try or I wanted to grow again and in between these tomatoes here I had a bunch of old cucumber seed and instead of throwing it out I thought I'd run an experiment cucumber growing is not great at this time of year but you know me I like doing experiments and pushing the boundaries so I planted this seed out to see first if it would germinate because some of them were five years old and a lot of the seed did germinate so now I'm going to see how well it grows through winter and then on the other side here I've got these turnips they're a white Japanese turnip never grown them before grew them from seed bought the seed so I'm keen to see 
how they turn out. And on that note, feel free to put any of your advice or on anything that I'm growing or that you're growing in a similar climate through your winter that you like growing that grows well. This is just a snapshot of what I'm growing at the moment. It's not everything you can grow, of course. There are thousands of things you can grow. And I've got my obligatory cabbages along here that I've salvaged and that are growing very well no matter where I put them at the moment. I'm keen for some sauerkraut once they've headed up and they're not all nice and juicy. And just right at the end here, I've slotted in some of the sprouting broccoli and I'm keen for them to start sprouting soon so we can start having them in stir fries and even pickling them or adding them to a fermentation recipe or something like that because uh, I love fermented crunchy veggies. There's nothing better or I don't believe healthier for you to eat. On the other side here is pretty much just about all beetroot and all snow peas. And then in the middle I've got some celerac. But I will start harvesting these beetroots once they become babies. And I expect the peas to start growing up the trellis, which they are probably growing up to the top there. They're not a very big pea, this one. It's not a very big growing variety. And it gets to about one and a half meters high. So I expect it to probably come up to about here or maybe just to the top of the trellis. We'll see. In these three large birdies beds here, there's not a lot going on. Mainly everything's overwintering. This bed here, we've got still quite a few chilies. One particularly interesting variety is this yellow ricotta. And the reason I'm growing it is because it's supposed to not mind the cold weather, but it still is struggling a little bit in this spot. Nevertheless, it's still growing fruit and it's a beautiful yellow chili, quite hot. And come spring, I'll cut these chilies back and the regrowth will generate more flowers and more fruit all through the spring and especially into the summer. This bed here, we've got sweet potato that again will also come back in the spring. It's suffering a lot at the moment, but that was mainly because it was smothered out by the gourds and the passion fruit vines that were just coming over. They really had to go and I'm glad I got rid of it now because the gourds were suffering a little bit through the winter and the passion fruit too. And all it was doing is blocking out the sun. Got the end of the asparagus and the ginger. Ginger on this side, asparagus on this side, both dying back. We can dig up the ginger through the winter and use some of that in the cooking. And then we can leave the rest in ground for it to reshoot in spring. I'm gonna redo this bed considerably come spring anyway. So I might be digging up a lot of that ginger. But of course, asparagus, they're a very long perennial crop, which will last a good 25 years. And I'm not gonna be moving this. It is dying back as you can see, but usually it dies back earlier than this. But eventually this will die completely back, probably in mid July. And then I will remulch, leave it sit, put some fertilizer in there, and then come spring is the time when it'll start coming back up through and that's the best time to start eating it. Well, I guess this turned into a fair walk around, didn't it? But I really wanted to show you all the plants that we are growing through our winter. So it gives you some idea of what we can grow at this time of year. In the background, you might be hearing some beeping all through the video. That is just some work, some road work that's going on about a mile away. The council's redoing the road in our suburb. It's not my mic or anything like that, beeping on my phone or something like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a wandering thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if this is the first time you're here. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.